Have you ever dated a fearful avoidant attachment style and then things didn't work out and wondered what they were feeling at the end of that breakup and relationship? Well, in this video, we are going to cover what fearful avoidant attachment styles feel during no contact. We'll talk a little bit about what no contact is, and we'll cover the three major phases the fearful avoidant experiences. And if you stick around to the end, we'll talk a little bit about what you can do at the end. So first and foremost, no contact is essentially this idea that after something breaks down or breaks off in a relationship, there's literally no contact. And when we say literally no contact, what that actually means is no calls, no texts, no emails, no responding to anything. If they do reach out to you, like actually no contact, nothing on social media where you're liking their posts or engaging indirectly or messaging there. Like it has to be literally zero contact on any platform. And the reason no contact is powerful, honestly, is because that when somebody stops the contact and has that separation from their ex, both parties have the ability to work through things if they decide to take that path, which is obviously the path I would recommend, like really working through um, your pain points, your challenges, doing some healing around the breakup itself, but also when that person isn't right there, we get the opportunity to sort of reflect on what we lost and we get to see, you know, was it not meant to work out? Was it meant to work out? You know, were there things that each of us did wrong that we wish we could correct? And, you know, there's this old saying, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. The reality is the mind is very adaptive. So, you know, we tend to, when we actually have space from something, be able to realize what we actually had. Now, for some people, you know, they go through such a painful or challenging relationship that that relationship was not meant to work out. And sometimes no contact can also be a protective measure for somebody in a relationship to gray rock, to keep space and distance from this person that they never want to get back together with. But the vast majority of the time that no contact is discussed, it's actually being discussed in the, the context of you are just not having any contact with your ex because things weren't working, you couldn't really break through the power struggle that you were in in the relationship, or you couldn't really find some way to get on the same page and make a commitment to one another. And so we take actual space. So this is something that I personally, before I go into the three parts of fearful avoidant um, and how they actually feel during no contact, this is something I very much recommend for people because there's three major benefits to doing no contact after a breakup. The first benefit is that if you're the person going no contact, it forces you to have to work on you and your healing and your growth. And it kind of creates this distance or space that sometimes we use an X and we sort of turn that X into a friendship kind of dynamic, or we continue loose ties, or maybe continue seeing them for some people continue hooking up with them after the breakup. And, you know, that stops you from moving on. It essentially enables you to not feel your pain. It's almost like its own form of numbing or suppressing the pain associated with the disconnection with the breakup without actually acknowledging that, you know, it's time to truly move on in a different direction. So the first benefit is that it actually gives you time to work on you and focus and prioritize yourself, which is a very healing thing to do after a breakup and actually allows the healing process to speed up. The second major thing is that it actually allows both parties to truly reflect on the relationship, like I was saying earlier. And this will be a place that if we are making the wrong decision, if the relationship is actually, you know, strong enough to maybe work out in the end, both parties will realize that during that time. So it's very beneficial from that perspective as well. And number three, it allows each individual to really see like, was I taking this for granted? Was I pushing somebody away from a space of self-sabotage, from a space of being afraid of being close? And so, you know, there, it forces people to really reflect on that sort of dynamic. So when somebody goes no contact with a fearful avoidant attachment style, there are generally three stages that the fearful avoidant actually experiences. The first stage is the quote unquote relief phase. I would almost put this as like the deactivated stage because the fearful avoidant hasn't necessarily when they're in this, this relief stage, they haven't necessarily taken full inventory of how they're actually feeling post breakup. Instead, they're kind of in their deactivated space. And so they're going, I love my needs for freedom and autonomy and independence and I'm free. 
and they're not processing. It's not like they get to relief because they've worked through their other side of, you know, actually missing the person and processing those feelings. It's more that they're just deactivating and having the space from any problems that were not getting worked through in the relationship can yes, initially be relieving, but it's sort of like one slice of the pie. It's not the entire picture, if that makes sense, or the entire pie. So they'll go through this initial relief stage. And generally that initial relief stage lasts for three weeks, four weeks, sometimes all the way up to about six weeks. Um, and you know, this is give or take if somebody's got a, a strong anxious side or they they lean more avoidant as an FA, you know, so they'll they'll go through this stage and then they'll start to feel their feelings. And this is where they really get to stage number two. And when they start to feel their feelings, they'll they'll go into this attempt to numb those feelings at the same time. I will say for for a moment here, actually, if you want to do a deep dive into like how to not numb and how to make sure that you're dealing with a breakup, even if it's just a situationship breakup in a healthy way, please feel free to check out the how to heal from a breakup course. Um, for 14 days, we have a trial going on at PDS for a limited time. And um, I'll put the link in the description box below. That course is designed to take like at least 30, 40, 50% of the sting out of the breakup immediately. Like it's designed to really help you work through those things quite quickly by getting to root cause and having action steps and strategies. The other 50% takes time because we have to go get our needs met from people and allow our cup to be filled. And you'll see in the, the course, but um, essentially, you know, there's, there's ways to really challenge our, our narratives post breakup and work through those stories. We're telling ourselves like I was never good enough, which is a big part of why a breakup hurts. There's ways to understand what you're missing about your ex and find new creative strategies to bring those things into your life in a variety of different forms. And there's ways to really enact self-love and clarity and certainty to sort of develop your own closure. And those can give more immediate relief. So I'll, I'll leave the link down below. And that actually gives you access to all of PDS as well. Um, so they go into this numbing stage, which ideally the fearful avoidant wants to stay out of, um, although it may be tough for them not to go there a little bit. If they're still fearful avoidant and, and just sort of beginning the healing journey, but the, the fearful avoidant, they'll try to deal with this stage by numbing. They'll really go to their creature comforts. They may feel a sense of loneliness, disconnection, emptiness, and they'll usually use, you know, alcohol or distractions or drugs or sometimes rebound relationships or things like that, binge eating food, um, working out too much, like, you know, these kind of like subconscious strategies to numb their feelings because Fearful avoidance aren't taught how to process their feelings growing up. So they'll go through the stage of like trying to push everything down and numb themselves out. And eventually they'll come out of that stage and then they'll enter into stage number three. And I call this the longing stage for the fearful avoidant because it's not that they necessarily fully want to be back or know how to recontinue a relationship where it left off, but they definitely think about it. And, you know, for some, in some cases, if the relationship has potential to work out, that phase can be a good time to reach out to an ex, but then make sure that you're not just reaching out to try to get back together on autopilot. Make sure that instead you're actually having the proper discussions. You're actually saying, Hey, what didn't work out the first time? What can we do differently? What boundaries do we need? What needs do we have? You know, how do we need to communicate differently this time around? Like there has to be an actual vetting of if there's a potential for it to work out in a healthy way. Um, but it's usually within that stage that fearful avoidance may miss their ex. Um, but they usually, because of that unwillingness to be vulnerable, aren't going to be so quick to reach out to that person at the same time. So those are the three major stages. Um, hopefully that's helpful for you. If you have questions down below, let me know. If you want more how to heal from a breakup, fearful avoidant content, please hit the like button. Let me know. I go through and look at the like ratios on YouTube and see like what videos people want to see the most of. Um, so it's like our, our new voting system, I decided. Um, so anyways, feel free. Let me know content um, questions you have down below or videos you want to see like this. Um, and thank you so much for stopping by. If you're enjoying this channel, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I can't wait to see you in the next videos.